Hi everyone, Darren here, and today I thought I'd put up a short video discussing this distributor, which I removed from that silver mini. And uh, as you might remember in that video, I noticed that there was some timing scatter, and the uh, the advance curve was was flat. So I thought I would go through this step by step, take it apart, find out if I can find out anything about this unit, and then measure the uh, the curve in here and see what it was intended to be and um, explain why I end up replacing this. So stay with me while I go through this distributor and uh, find out what it's all about. The first thing I noticed on this is that the bottom engagement gear here is loose against this pin. I'll see if we can get the better shot of this. So that that may have just been the reason why I was getting some so, so much spark scatter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick it in the vise and get the uh, degree wheel on here, and we'll see how much um, scatter that was actually providing. And I've got the pointer set up here off the degree wheel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this back and forth, and we'll see how much uh, variation or error there is due to that pin on the bottom. So let me go ahead and dial this in here, and I'm going to center it a little bit so that you guys can see. Okay. So that's zero. You see how it moved? Just maybe a half degree. I'll readjust this so we can see it more clearly. So if I advance it, and let it retract, it comes back at about one degree. But then if I push on it a little bit, it goes back to zero. So there's nearly a degree of slop just from that pin slop at the bottom of this distributor. And remember, one degree of motion here is actually two degrees at the crankshaft. So you would have been seeing a two degree variation on your timing marks using a timing lit gun. Anyway, let's uh, take it apart and see what else we find here. Before I take it apart any further, let's go ahead and check the total advance. So the plate on here said 12 degrees, and let's find out how much it actually gives. Looks like 11 degrees. Yeah, double check that. About 11 degrees. Now that I've measured the overall advance, I'm going to go ahead and remove this and I'm going to take the central shaft out of the distributor unit and we're going to go ahead and put it on the distributor machine and figure out what the springs are set up to do and see see what, uh, what the overall advance is on the distributor machine. One thing I've noticed is that this little plate here that says 12 is actually what is stopping the advance cam from rotating. So normally I expect the advance cam here to hit the stop here, as they normally do, but this little plate has been put in to stop it artificially. One thing I wanted to point out is it does look like someone has been in here trying to make adjustments to the spring, or perhaps the spring has gotten stretched on installation, I'm not sure. but. Uh, these hoops also look like they've been distorted in some way, so I may have to bend these springs just to get them out of the distributor itself. If I do have to bend these springs to get them out, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to test this unit first in my distributor machine to see what the curve is as it was in the car, and then I'll go ahead and mess about with taking these out, because if I take these springs out of here and I bend them a little bit, it'll change the advance curve. Um, small small adjustments to the springs actually cause tremendous changes in the overall characteristics of this assembly. Now that I've removed the central shaft out of the unit, I noticed right away that the secondary spring, the stronger spring of the differential assembly here, uh, is not actually doing anything. So this plate here that says 12, which locks against the post preventing it from rotating more than 12 degrees. In this particular example it was 11 as we just measured. But this secondary spring does not even 
engage. As you can see, it's just becoming tight at the end of this spring range here. So this distributor was essentially running entirely off of the primary spring. So I'm imagining that the curve on this was flat and on that silver mini, which is the car that this distributor came out of, um, it was indeed very, very flat because it was only running on one spring. All right, so I now have the distributor installed into my distributor machine. I'm gonna go ahead and spin it up and we'll see how these springs were set up. All right, I have the unit spinning here on my distributor machine and I'm gonna go ahead and spin it up. Uh, I've already noticed that it's advanced and we're only at 300 RPMs, which means that this distributor was advancing at idle speeds, which could explain why I was seeing such bad fluctuations in timing at idle. Uh, we've reached 5 degrees and we're only at 450 RPMs, which is 900 just crankshaft speed. Alrighty, and we've now reached full advance at 830 RPMs. So this distributor was fully advanced before 2000 RPMs. So it's no wonder why uh, the car wasn't performing very well. Uh, it was advancing way too rapidly and there just wasn't enough overall. Alright. So what I've done here is I've drawn out the numbers so we can see clearly what I was describing on the distributor machine. Uh, this curve here, this line here, represents a typical 10 degree advanced curve. And let's just say at 4,000 RPMs it hit 30 degrees and 20 at 2 and uh, 10 at 1,000. Now on a 10 degree advanced curve on a distributor, that's 20 degrees at the crank. So in order to achieve 30 degrees total, we have to add 10 degrees of static timing to this curve. That's why it starts out at 10. The we measured was, well, it was supposed to be 12, but let's just say it was 12. Uh, that means you have 24 degrees of total advance. And in order to achieve 30 degrees total timing, you have to add six degrees static. So uh, by drawing the two curves out, you can see what I'm talking about when I'm saying that it has way too much advance. So we saw that it started out advancing below 500 RPMs. And by the time it hit 1000, it was already in the 2000 range and it was fully advanced before 2000 RPMs. I believe it was about 16, 1800. And after that, there was no more advance. So the curve goes straight up and flat. Now, the reason it goes straight up and doesn't have a bend is because it doesn't have the second spring. As we saw earlier, the secondary spring was uh, not working. So this is what a secondary spring would look like when it's actually working, whereas it did not have one at all. So this is what I mean when I say that the curve is flat. It just kind of went straight and there was no definition to it. Also, it was very early compared to a typical unit. Now, if you have a car that needs this curve, great. But unless you measure the and measure what you need in your car, there's no way you're going to get the performance out of your car by sticking a or any aftermarket distributor into your car without first knowing what you need. So this is why we need to test and measure everything before we put it on our cars. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I really just wanted to find out what was wrong with this distributor and uh, the reasons were clear that the advance was not great because the springs were not set up properly. So it just goes to show you that just because you can buy something and stick it on your car doesn't necessarily mean it's correct. And in this particular instance, this distributor was a So even the major manufacturers don't quite get this right. So if you guys appreciated that video, let me know in the comments below. 
and uh, stay tuned for more distributor videos and tuning videos as I have plenty to do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.